Well, today I'm going to talk about antifreeze. I'm not going to debate what type to use, red, orange, yellow, green. I'm just going to just show you how to get a proper antifreeze for your wet sleeve diesel engines like my five ton has right here. Um, so today I got to shuffle trucks. I got to put this one up front and then take my deuce and a half this decent half and park it here because of that. My deuce and a half leaks oil. They all do when they're these M211s or 1952s. So I'm going to put this back where the gravel is. But this truck needs its antifreeze treated. And I'm going to show you how to treat your antifreeze. So let me get these trucks shuffled around and then we'll get right to it. I'm letting it cool a little bit. Want the water temperature below 150. Because uh, what I did is I had, there was a bunch of antifreeze that was on sale that I bought a year ago before I got this truck. And uh, of course it was just conventional antifreeze. So I went ahead and bought it and uh, bought like about 20 gallons of it of concentrate so I was reading so much problems that the, these trucks were having with antifreeze if there was a right type or not so I just went ahead and, and put the regular antifreeze in this thing for now it is not the heavy duty type so what I got to do is I'm going to go ahead and charge it with these um, um, DC4, DCA4 um, additives here, and uh, and what this does, this is your anti-foaming agent that get goes in wet-sleeved diesel engines. So what I'm going to do is bring this up to where it is kosher of what is supposed to be inside these Cummings engines and uh, so we're going to go through that process on how to charge an antifree system that's not that was not uh, charged I, I, the only word I could think of for the for these type of engines. It's just regular conventional ethyl glycol antifreeze. So let's get going. Okay first of all you start out with clean buckets. Okay because this antifreeze is going right back in it. And all I'm going to do is drain it right there at this drain point right there. And what I'm going to do is drain a couple gallons in the first bucket just to get it below the level of your overflow of your reservoir tank and then the second bucket I'm going to um, pour exactly four gallons into it and then that's where we're going to do our mixing okay I got my uh, roughly four gallons in there as you can see um, the levels right about there I think the five gallon mark is probably right about there but that's close enough so I'm going to take a test strip and I get the Sun at my back so I'm in shadows and out of shadows so I'm going to take a test strip lay it down here for now close this right away because you don't want to get these um, any moisture in here any and then I look the expiration date I don't know if you could read or not but the expiration date on this is the uh, there we go it's probably better January the uh, 2017 okay so the temperature has to be the coolant temperature has to be above 15 below 120 I think we're about 100 degrees well, actually, cooler than that. So let's test it in there. You got, and then you wait 72 seconds 
okay and then we'll see what the colors are I don't know if it's better like this okay or is it better in the shade Okay, so now we're going to test the strips right here with the color. Now, actually it goes like this. Okay. As you can see, we're sort of pinkish. And that puts us right about right where my thumb is at. And we're supposed to add one pint to every four gallons. Uh, the middle one is your temperature. And where that's sitting is basically, now I'm going to do this, it's the middle one. And we're basically about minus 34 degrees below zero to maybe even 40. And then this one, the gold one, is your pH balance, because I got it backwards, okay? I'm holding it backwards. And uh, as you can see, we're neutral, okay? This is where water is at. On your pH scale, um, 7.0 is water, demillerized water. Anything above that is acid. Anything below that is an alkali. So we're neutral on that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pour one pint, this is one pint, this is four units, inside this four gallons, and then I'm going to mix it. Okay. Apparently there were some additives left from the old antifreeze that came out of it. Because of because I tested it on, on the pure antifreeze and it was um it, it it was this lime green color. Where this one right here is a pinkish color. So there was a, still a little bit of additive left in there. But I'm gonna do a full charge on it. Okay. Oh, here's my stick. I forgot to bring a steering stick. And being in Wyoming, or anywhere out west, you always have sticks laying around. I don't know. There's no damn trees out here. And where all these sticks come from, I don't know. But, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and stir it. I made sure my stick was clean. There was no dirt on it. Banged it against the tires. Okay. Okay, now that should work just fine. Okay, now we'll see where, where we're doing here. Let me dig out another test strip. Again, close your, your, your test strip bottle jar. Oh, I got a few little floaties in there. That's okay, I'll dig them out. At least the wood floats. Okay. Now, let's see where we're at. And we have to wait about 72 seconds for this to everything to read and as you can tell we're already changed our pH balance a little bit to more of an alkaline that's your anti-corrosive to clean all the rust out and as you can tell the the very far one that's pink um, 
that's about where we want to be at. Let's see. Okay, since I got to hold it backwards, I got to do this. So if we look where it says ideal, we're basically matched right there. I don't know if you could tell it in the camera or not, but I could see it with my eyes. We're more than 800, we're about 1200. So this is where we want to be ideally. Okay, it hasn't changed our our freeze points. Okay, turn this around, and then our pH dropped a little bit towards more of an alkaline to a 0 0.8, 8.0 to a 7. So, this is where we want to be at. So since this is a now this is where math comes in, okay? Since this is a 12 gallon system and I treated four gallons, I'm gonna go ahead and pour two more of these inside this four gallons. And that will treat the whole truck. So, let me go treat the whole, let me treat that, then we'll get right back. Okay, I got my two buckets. This bucket here is a treated bucket. That's the untreated one. I'm going to and put this bucket in first because I want all of this additive inside the engine. I don't want it sitting inside my overflow tank. So that goes in first, and then the untreated stuff is what I will well, I what I will top off on the last because I want to make sure all of the treated stuff gets into the engine. Like I say, since I didn't bring my camera stand, I'm not going to record me pour it into the thing. Okay. 